sorry. Dang. I'm so fucking tired of you guys coming around here. Okay. I tell all your friends. Okay. Don't fucking yell. Don't hit. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Hey. Get out of here. I'll get that board from you, and you'll never see it again. Oh shit, dude. You are Christmas. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I'm so tired of you guys, it just makes me sick. So where do we start? Um, skateboarding, skateboarders are an interesting uh, demographic. We're generally, uh, at least when we start, pretty young and uh, generally not a voting age. We're not officially represented. We don't have any natural allies in government. I just remember, um, skating with a bunch of friends and one of my friends asked me like how long are you going to skate and i'm like what do you mean how long am i going to skate from the minute i started skateboarding it was like oh this is definitely something that i'm going to be doing yeah forever it's you know? not something you ever quit you know <laughs> it's just i mean maybe maybe it wanes a little and as you get older there's not as much time as when you were a kid but i don't think you ever quit you know and over the years as my children have grown up and have uh have skated. Uh, I swiped their boards and, uh, and tried it a few times myself and I still do enjoy that. How do people usually treat you when they find out like that you're an engineer graduated from college? And They don't believe it. They wonder what the hell I'm still doing on a skateboard. People don't expect me to be on a skateboard when I'm 24. They think it's a kid thing and no one expects someone that has a brain to do it. I think it's because people don't understand what skateboarding is. I think people see like a lot of people view skateboarding as a very popular form of crime, which is, which is not I mean, true. When you're that young, everyone calls you a skater and stuff, whether you regard yourself as a skateboarder or not. But grown-ups think of you as like, you know, the rebellion, rebellious kid who, you know, doesn't have respect for authority. And a lot of times it is that way, and a lot of times it turns out worse because they all treat you like that, so you start acting like that. You know, we're skating around and, and pedestrians and, and people, uh, you know, form opinions about what we do and who we are and uh, we don't have any way of, of convincing them otherwise. The judgmental people that just uh, look at you, with the skateboard in your hand, they're just like, yeah, troublemaker. None of us are just troublemakers, yeah, you know? Yeah. But for the most part here, people come at you with like a dickhead approach, just right off the bat without trying anything nice in the first place. I don't know if it's just because they think that, that maybe now because they're adults, they can, they can talk back a little more, you know, or if it's just, yeah. They treat us like little kids, you know, like we're not, and I'm an adult, dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, I may not be 30 years old, I mean, you know, I may be only 20, but like, I'm an adult, like, I act like an adult, I'm rational, like, I'm logical, I'm, I do everything adults do, so why can't this person come at me like a rational adult and talk things out with me? I'm willing to talk, you know, like, I like talking. Occasionally we'll get, we'll get people who get a little belligerent with us and, you know, they're telling us skateboarding is not a crime. Skateboarding is not a crime. However, our school district has made a district policy that skateboards and rollerblades are not allowed on our school campus. So if we see them, we are supposed to take them away. Well, they, they want to skate. I mean, that's the bottom line. They find a place that they think is good. It's uh, been featured in a number of skate magazines. They want to go to a place that they see other kids skate. So. Uh, but as far as their attitude, you know, it's fine. Uh, they don't particularly like to be chased off, but they'd rather be chased off than be arrested for trespassing. So uh, most of them are pretty good.
feel happy. I feel really good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to explain it to somebody. You can't explain happiness to somebody. You can't explain sadness. You just know that it's a feeling that's there. I look at it like skateboarding saved my life because all of my friends kind of drifted off into things like, you know, drinking, party, and drugs, all that stuff. And when they would start going to the parties, I just, all I wanted to do was go and ride my skateboard, you know? I wouldn't even try to explain. It's kind of undefinable because skateboarding as a sport is one thing. You know, it's just basically rolling around on a piece of wood with four, four wheels. But for so many people, it's a complete lifestyle. It's the way they live their life. It's changed everything about their life. It's hard to imagine my life without skateboarding. It's one of those things where you've gone so far down the road that it's difficult to imagine where you'd be if you hadn't gone that direction. Um, skateboarding is like it's one of the most rewarding things in my life, without a doubt. Um, and it's hard to say why. Um, it's, it's just a good, it's a good activity. It's a piece of wood with some wheels on it, and you can do anything you want with it. I think it's like a, a pretty decent pastime. It gives kids something to do. It's actually. I think uh, quite admirable. I think people just in general need to start seeing skateboarding as a more positive thing. My version of skateboarding happens in the streets. You know, it happens down you know, the city street, it happens on the school. Like, uh, yeah. Skateboarding has sure changed, I mean, no doubt about it, um, because it just used to be, you know, you, you kept all four wheels on the ground and that was it, you know, maybe you went off and up curbs, if you were good, you learned to go up curbs, but uh, nobody had the idea of, you know, flying through the air and doing some of the grinding and some of the, the uh, you know, some of the activities that are, are part of skateboarding now, so that's changed quite dramatically, and of course, because that's changed, that's kind of brought school furniture and things like that into into the picture. The, the, they do do damage, they you know, they damage the tile, they, you know, it's just in the act of what they're doing, I don't think, they don't intentionally do stuff, the well, majority. Unfortunately, there's a few that there, do, that's just the same thing, there's always yeah. the exception, there's a few that, like we had potted plants up here, right. that they, they ruined by inappropriate behavior, and I hate to even, I don't even know what to say it on tape, but they, and then, they urinate and it. Kathy? And we've had to have the police come down there because they just, we're riding the sides, uh, breaking the concrete. We had to take a little bit of action to try to get that stopped, and we put the knobs on the rails so that that would prevent the skateboards from going down. And uh, also moved the rails out far enough so that it would be in front of the planning area so they would continue to take the layers off of the planning area as well as off of the steps. Well, we'd actually have these put on first, 
and they pry these off, and so we had to upgrade these other ones. It's the rails that they really like, because we also had guards on the rails, and they took them off. We've had uh, calls almost daily now at Phoenix Plaza. Phoenix Plaza. Phoenix Plaza. The problems that have happened are we've had windows broken with skateboards, you know, when they're flipping tricks, there's a little square out here in the front. And, um, customers trying to get through and get run over as, as they're riding around. Um, that creates a problem. Then the nicer ones will actually go in the back where the loading docks are. On the back of each business there's a stoop and loading dock. But then they wax them all up and of course when they're doing their grinds and flips and stuff it chips up the concrete back there. Yeah. Which, you know, that's an expense. We've got to replace windows, we've got intimidated customers. That costs us money when they don't come in. And we've got to repair concrete worry about what's going on behind us you know it's it's a problem they like to do tricks on the outside and sometimes on the inside of your building in areas that uh, damage the building or damage the benches you know it didn't matter if a mother wanted to get in or whatever these kids were there they were in charge and that was their private ground and we had to get the police over there a lot of people think that the police think that skateboarding shouldn't be allowed and that it's a a problem and uh, we don't at all feel that way. We feel that uh, kids should have the, the, the right and enjoy themselves as best they can. Part of the problems that have, ar have arisen um, have been some vandalism that's been done as a result of skateboarding. Uh, some kids don't respect other people's property by waxing up curbs and benches and, and brickwork and that sort of thing which causes either damage to the brickwork or uh, just um, unsightly marks because it turns black after a while. And what happens is kids come on the campus who really don't respect the campus because they don't go here. They're older. I don't even think they're from this area. And they, they vandalize the campus while they're here or they intentionally uh, shoot their skateboard into a window or a wall and just create damage, which is trem a tremendous cost to us. And it's simply vandalism. When it is a local problem, People come step forward and, and they help you to catch these guys and, and, and stop them from doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, that hasn't worked here, I think, because they're not from our neighborhood here. How much uh, damage has been caused like in the last, in the time you've been here? Gosh, I would say maybe $2,500 worth of damage. I would probably say about $500,000 worth of damage um, throughout the years. We came to about three thousand dollars just over the spring vacation that was two weekends and in a year where we're we've already been cut we know our budget's going to be cut next year 500 bucks per table is a lot of money down the drain it's an ongoing uh, situation i'm not here to on some kind of crusade against uh skateboarding i'm just here to let the school go on about its business educating kids in the community and detrimental uh it's Detrimental only to the fact that instead of spending it on the kids, you know, whether it's supplementary materials, you know, instructional materials, or whether it's field trips, enrichment, you know, whatever, that's just money that's not spent on them. But I think even more than that for our, our students and our faculty and our staff, um, it's just kind of demoralizing to come to work Monday morning wondering what's been destroyed, what's been messed up. Yeah. This beautiful, lovely city of Philadelphia. Uh -huh. A city of brotherly love. Not skateboarders love. I won't have them here. I'm going to write them tickets and I'm going to call the authorities on them if I have to, to keep them out of here to keep the pedestrians' safety for as well as theirs. Documentary about skateboarding. So you can't make it here because there's no skating. Cheeto signs around. No, I'm I'm not skating. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just filming. Who's just in there? This is sitting, on, this, sitting on your back. This is my transportation around town. Your transportation around town. Yeah, I'm, I swear. I came from Utah to make a documentary about skateboarding, and like how Love Park is is causing well, some problems. Come here. Come here. Okay. Film this. Put a film on that too. 
Okay. Okay, no I'm in this. Okay, cool. Did you see the four fits? And you ain't skateboard, but come back here and you skate. You see the four fit your skateboard? Yeah, no no, and I I don't want to skate here. Huh? That's what I'm trying to say, like I'm just making a documentary about skateboarding and like how people are skating at Love Park and how it's like causing such a problem in the city. So how do you know about Love Park? How do I know about yeah. Love Park? Yeah. Everyone knows about Love Park. And it is on the internet, right? Oh yeah, too. I, I researched a lot of newspaper articles about Love Park and like everything that was going on. 681. So. Yeah. How old are you? 681. I am 23. Yeah, skateboard? Are you ready to give skateboarding up? North Why would uh, for prisoners I, don't, take in, please. I don't think I'd be ready to give skateboarding up. It's too fun. You don't work? Of course they work. Part of the reason why people have misconceptions about what skateboarders are like is that the way they're exposed to it is through Mountain Dew commercials. And, and every little thing has a skateboarder now. Like you see a deodorant stick, there's like a little skateboarder on there. You don't have to be a skateboarder to skate anymore, and that's what's cool. You know, there's more kids riding skateboards right now than playing baseball, and that's that's pretty heavy. You know, I just hope that the kids don't buy into the image that it's being peddled to them now. You know, being like jackass or like harshing on people. That's not what skateboarding is all about. You know, it's not about putting up a bad image. Not about you know saying you know. I'm this way because I skateboard. It's, it's, you know, it's everybody's in individuality, their personality. And the individual can take it in his or her own direction, but in the end, it's the mass of individuals making this culture. There's so much more than what the public sees. Yeah. You know, they see what they see on TV. You know? Most people, I think, are generally very appreciative. Skateboarding is a pretty beautiful thing, and if you've never seen someone roll up to something and ollie over it and keep going. It's it's pretty amazing. Like it looks magnetic. Like it, it's an amazing it's an amazing skill to see. Like the first time I ever saw someone that was actually good at skateboarding it blew my mind. I mean, it had a very deep effect on me. This is? Yeah. I'm sorry. Do you know that? No, I didn't know that. We're just like... You, this uh, skateboarding, grinding on things, oh. doing uh, anything but just all wheels on the ground is yeah. against university policy. Do you mind shutting it off? I mean, you can have it as proof that I've told you. So all next right. time I give you a Class A misdemeanor citation for doing it. Yeah! much part of my life since I was 10 years old and once I started skating I could never stop so it's an addiction you know what I mean and it's, and it's fun and it's like you don't think about anything else except skateboarding you know for goodness sake refine yourself it was complete originated and carried forward by young people themselves Like, how do you articulate that, though? How do you articulate that, man, it's just like, it's this thing, it's this passion. It's just a really fun thing, you know, riding a skateboard, learning tricks, progressing to learn more tricks. Any kind of games there are, are all adult-dominated. They had adult rules, and they require the prepar preparation ahead of time of a special environment according to adult perspective. I usually talk about it as an art form. I talk about it as if it's you know, painting or ballet or poetry or, you know. The very idea 
of adapting yourself to the environment is just the re absolute reverse of what they've thought all the while, which is that you set up the environment within adult space rules and then you put them in there and they must follow the, uh, pre, uh, the uh, preordained rules. For me, it's very uh, soothing at the end of a tough day. I can go out and skate. I feel really good after I'm done skateboarding. You skateboard the way you like to skate. You, get, you do your own style, your own tricks. And you're not out sat to satisfy anyone. So to me, it's a way to be by myself, do my own thing, but then join in with other friends who are all doing their own thing. I'm watching them do certain tricks and the way they do it, and I appreciate them and how they, their style is and how they do their tricks, and I try and learn from them. But we all have our individual styles, and we all do it differently, and that's what I like about skating. When I started, it was like, my parents, you know, they like were divorcing or whatever. You know, the only way to get away is like, geez, I'm gonna go skate. I don't want to sit at home because they'd be home arguing all the time. You know, you get away from it. Yeah. Local knows you can't skate in the shopping centers, right? We don't live near here, we just live It doesn't matter. You can't skate in the shopping center anywhere in this city or a school or any business district, correct? And I guess not. No, I know. Holy cow. Two cops? They're crazy. It's a nice little store, isn't it? Really? You see, all I understand it's an arrestable offense. I could technically take all of you and book you, book the camera and the film as evidence, and use it in court to show you're all skateboarding. You're not supposed to be skating. Yeah. The city spent working on that skate park. Why don't you guys stay over there? Sorry, I, I, I seriously didn't know that it was. Whether you guys realize it or not, by doing this, you're killing yourselves. Right now in South County, they're trying to build a really neat skate park down there, but this is exact examples of people come in to fight having a skate park put in their community because the kids come from all over. Hi, my job is that they asked me if it's possible for me to do the project, but I did. Oh, okay. That's okay. Cool. I told him, I said, you were moving, we're just asking him. <laughs> yeah, I just realized where I was at. Sorry about that. Sorry. He parked in front of the drive thru. Our skate park's the only place we're allowed to skate. Yeah, you skate in a residential district in a sidewalk. Around your house and stuff. You can't skate in a school, business district, shopping center, library, civic center. Um, I have a question because he wasn't even skating. He was just watching us. No, he was. He was skating right behind you. Or right behind him when he came off of here. And I just talked to him 10 minutes ago, right there, 200 feet away, told him not to do this. Oh. Uh. Yeah, he was skating. So I'm going to skateboard. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Holy cow. I started skateboarding, man, and, and it was like it was like this blessing. And then, and then to go out, you know, two days after Christmas, after getting my first skateboard, and get beat up by a cop for no reason. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like the, the actual like physical abuse. It wasn't the it wasn't that he was physical with me that was like scary or, or threatening to me. It was how angry he was. 
You know, like he was like foaming at the mouth, angry, like eyes, like so intense, and his face beat red, and he's just screaming at me, and he's like, he's not hitting me, but he's holding me so tightly, so hard, you know, in such a threatening manner. I mean, it, 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 it scared me really bad. And uh, so he throws me around pretty good, screaming at me, and my, and my friends are kind of close, and he makes them, leave, leave, he makes them, you know, Run up, they run further away, but they're still kind of lurking. Like, Leave him alone. They're really scared and upset. You know, they don't understand what's happening. He opens up the back of his car and he throws me on the back seat. And uh, I'm like, "What? Am I under arrest? Like, what's you know, what's happening? I don't even understand." Yeah. And uh, he like takes out a little notepad. He's, "What's your name?" He takes my name. "Where do you live? What's your phone number?" So I give him all this information. I'm like, okay. He's like, "All right, get out of here." So, what? Why? What happened? And why? I don't understand, you know? And I remember I just turned around and I looked at him, I picked my skateboard up, and I started screaming, ah, ah, and he's looking at me like, whoa, like, what's the matter with this kid, you know? I took my board and started smashing myself in the head with it. I guess it was like, <laughs> the only way I can express to him, like, how fucked up I felt. Like, you fucked me up, man. Like, why'd you do that? Like, why did you do that to me? Like, how dare you fucking do that to me? Uh, just, cool, just bawling tears, so fucking angry. And I get home and my parents are like, what the hell happened to you? And I, I tell them what happened. And my mom freaks out. And she calls the police department, she calls a lawyer and all this crap. Lawyer basically, in the end the lawyer tells us like, you know, there's nothing, there's really nothing you can be able to do except it for what it was. And, you know, tell your kid not to skate, you know. <laughs> tell him not to go out and cause any more trouble. Yeah. yeah. So my mom and I go down to the police department a couple days later and we meet this officer and he walks up, takes his hat off, ma'am, you know, very sorry about what happened. Uh, he was just very upset, you know, that these, these kids are out on the streets this time of night, anything could happen and, you know, I asked them to leave and, you know, they didn't leave in a proper manner, they were, you know, being disrespectful to me and uh, I just thought, like, you know, it was, it was this moment where I had to teach these kids a lesson. And, make them understand that you know, they have to respect authority and, and that there's, they have no business being on the streets doing this at any, at any hour, you know. And my mom, my mom's like, okay, that's okay. And he turns to me, son, gets down on one knee, you know, very sorry about this, you know, I'll accept my apology. Okay, whatever, man, you know, shake his hand. So stupid. <laughs> a couple years later, I'm skating at a, 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 another shopping center. Actually, I was living in California. I was living in Huntington Beach at the time. I was visiting my folks um, in Jersey. I was a sponsored pro, you know, the whole deal now. And I'm back, I'm just skating by myself at late at night at the shopping center. And this cop car rolls up and just stops and looks at me. And I'm just waiting for the cop to roll the window down and tell me to leave, so I'm just standing there. And he never does anything, so I walk the 10 feet from where I am to where he is, and I just look in the window, and he rolls the window down, and he goes, yeah? I go, do I have to leave? And he goes, no, it's fine. Just stay away from the storefronts. You know, we don't want any broken windows or anything. Okay. Sounds fair. You know, the cop rolls on. I can still see his taillights in the distance. Another cop car pulls in. This cop rolls the window down immediately. Get the fuck out of here. I go, excuse me? I go, that officer right there, you can still see his taillights, told me it was okay if I skated here as long as I stay away from the storefronts. I'm telling you something fucking different. Get the fuck out of here. I go, okay. And I look at him, and he looks at me, he goes, I know you. I go, yeah, man, you know me. He goes, you're that little punk-ass bitch. Had to fucking come crying with your mommy down in the police department because I slapped your ass around. I was like, yeah, that's me, man. Door opens, him and his partner get out, walk around, get in front of me. How old are you now, man? 17. 17. Big man now, huh? Big man. Tell you what, punk. You come and see me when you're 18, I'll kick your fucking ass again. I go, okay, man, that's cool. You know, just walk off, get in the car, and drive off, you know. Just like, holy shit, that fucking happened, you know what I mean? Like, like that. Yeah, there's plenty of stories about cops being bad. Hey, there's a reason why they're still acting bad. Their higher ups are telling them they're allowed to, you know. Hey, I don't really have any compassion for anybody who's ruined city property. This park is a major area where we have 
homeless people sleeping, like this guy over here. Yeah. We got vacants over here. We got skateboarders. We got crackheads. And now skateboarders, crackheads, and homeless people all in one area. We don't feel that we should be exclusively discriminated against when there's other problems in the park. And homelessness is a problem. If there's homeless and crackheads and skateboarders, why do they crack down on skateboarders instead of the crackheads? Well, the crackheads are really harmless. As you see right now, I can wake this guy up, but I'm not. He's not, done. He's not bothering anybody. He's sleeping. He's probably tired. Mm -hmm. And he's probably homeless and has nowhere to go. So he don't have a choice. Yeah. Skateboarders have a choice to go wherever they want to skate, but not here. If cops are going through love and saying, Bums don't cause problems, skateboarders do, then that's where the higher ups are coming from. We have uh, the Philadelphia Police Department, and we have the Fanmon Park Ranger, and we also have Scotland Yard Security making sure that these skateboarders don't get away with what they've been doing to this city. This yeah. is a fine city. Love was such a crack hole. It was such a bad spot. Skateboarding felt like it was allowed there because it was so not anything other than blackening ledges. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of love and peace. Not for people come out here and ruin this fine park. And that's what they've been doing. And I can show you the scrapings and the... You that time back up? What? You that time? What? You that time in the wall? No skateboards. Oh, the sign on the yeah, wall. Yeah, that's what I did, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. He's off, he's off, he's off. He's that dang, he's that dang. I'm like, what? He's off, he's off. See that sign wall? Oh, the sign on the wall, he's off. Yeah, that's what I said. It's not going away. It's it, not it going drives, away. And it drives people insane. Yeah. Like anyone who wants you, you know, wants you to quit doing something and you don't do it, essentially, they, they flip out. And so it, it does, it, it leads to what your question is. It leads to physical violence. Yeah. It leads to, you know, to people trying to mentally scare you into things. They do. They throw you in the back of a cop car and tell you you're going to jail for skateboarding. You kind of sit back there and it doesn't make any sense and you are kind of scared, but you're not going to quit skating because you got thrown in the back of a cop car. It's ridiculous. And so, you know, people are, people are insane. Yeah. And the cops are so frustrated that they have to come and kick skateboarders out because there's so much more they could be doing, you know? They know it. The cops know it. And that's why they, they're, they're so... They get so mad, you know. There's there's times where there's cops that are just full power trippers, you know. So yeah, there's plenty of stories. I mean, there's there's footage, there's everything. You know? But they don't understand skateboarding, so not only they 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 don't even see it as you're skating there. You're just there vandalizing. Yeah, you may as well you may as well be walking up to their property with a sledgehammer and just smashing shit, you know. So essentially, that, that's that, what you're that, doing. That, that's their perception and. Try to explain to them what they actually are doing, and of course, if I mention the chipped concrete or the wax, they say, "Well, that wasn't us." Of course, it's never anybody. It's like my five little kids. No, I didn't do it. It was somebody else. Yeah. So nobody does anything, and yet somehow it still happens. I admit it. You know, I just pretend like I didn't do that to that spot. Mm -hmm. You don't ever really go home and feel guilty, do you, after skating somewhere? No. <laughs> I never felt guilty about skating. But honestly, what if you went to a place and just colored the ledge black? You'd feel like crap, you know what I mean? Most of what I heard, I mean, it's, it's primarily authorities overreacting. Yeah. The worst cases have been a couple of kids who decide to just chest up to me and swear in my face and so on, which if I didn't, ha if I didn't do what I do for a living, yeah. I could probably get real upset and... It's, you know, skaters are getting people's face and just kind of antagonize them, you know. It's your mentality too. You're a teenager. You're an asshole. I mean, you really are when you're that. You know, you have that mentality. You love me, Fuck you doing? Get in my way! You made me crap. You that dime in the wall? I'm in. You that dime in the wall? No skateboard. Go. If you don't like it? Make it. I. If you keep on doing it, I'll wreck you both right here. You're gonna wreck me. I'm an off-duty police officer right now. Okay, you could have asked me. Ask me, not him. I'm the one uh, that's skateboarding. Uh, wait a minute. He no, told no, no, you I'm the one that's skateboarding. Ask me, I'll stop. He told you what happened out there. No, he was just laughing. If you ask me, I'll stop. Okay, no, okay, no, 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 ask me. Ask me. Wall. ask me and I'll stop. Ask me right now. Say, uh, please don't skateboard hey, and I'll say, no get problem. Get it down, what it could say. It says, no, skateboarding allowed anytime. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Anytime. You can do what you want to do. Okay, sorry, officer. Why don't you just show me your badge then, tough guy? Hey, you're lucky that I don't have it on. Hey, boy. How's it going? Hey. 
There's some that, and and the, they're the minority, they're not the majority that have been belligerent and, and disrespectful when we've asked them to do that. Yeah. Um, but you're always going to get those, and they're the ones that give the rest of them a, a bad name. I, and I think that's the same with police work. I think, you know, probably 99% of police officers are great people, and then you, you might have a the one bad encounter with one egotistical police officer and from then on some kid or some person's gonna hate cops forever. I got handcuffed for just like, I guess the lady thought I was laughing at her and she put me in handcuffs, called my parents and everything and ever since I didn't feel like dealing with it so I just started running, running every time I saw a cop. I think kids are afraid of police. They may, they may not even have a bad experience with the police, but they know skateboarding, and skateboarding is illegal, and they know cops scare kids away now instead of actually protecting them. The only, the only time kids are dealing with police are so they can get thrown out. One thing I do want to point out, me being a police officer, I respond only when there's a group of skaters misbehaving, and that's not to mean to say they're all bad or they only do bad things, it's just that's when people call on them. If there's a, if there's a kid in a security guard, and the security guard, you know, Considerably older than the kid, it's it's kind of up to the security guard to kind of handle the situation and, and set the tone. And, and if he's gonna get drawn into a fist fight with some kid, that's pretty much his fault, even if the kid throws a first punch. It, it is. It there, is. There, there's there's like a level where like if the, if the guy sees a fight coming, it's like just call the cops. You know, no, don't sit there and antagonize the kid. It's essentially you know you're you're invading their space and doing something, leaving a mark or whatever. Um, but. It would, it would be more helpful if people looked at what you're doing as your own personal expression and your own personal athletic creativity and that maybe, you know, you just need somewhere else to do it. I don't expect kids, teenagers, to, uh, to grow up quick and mature and, and understand uh, that, they, that there's this, that they have this responsibility as skateboarders, you know. Mm -hmm. so, I, I put it on I put it on the adults I put it on the communities. We make contact with skateboarders and they start getting belligerent with us. I guarantee you they're getting belligerent with parents at home. People say that we hassle people and harass people, but I think it's kind of the other way around. Cops harass us just for doing what we do. And every single interaction that a, that a cop has in their day is with another person is probably really negative. Like, it's like working in the complaints department in a department store, probably. Well, if you've been a policeman for more than about five minutes, you're called names all the time. Uh, it's, it just goes with the job. So, if you're a cop and all you have is negative interactions almost all day, almost every day, for years and years and years, like, that's got to have some kind of a psychological effect on you, you know? No, we can't have you do it at all. What happens if you get hurt on your last try? Then you sue the Delta Center, so forget it. We would never sue. Oh, yeah, right. You don't, you think we'd sue? Well, yeah, probably. Come on, well, give us the benefit of We the do day. it every day, and so we're kind of used to it. We do what every day? Oh, well, we skateboard every day, and we I get know, hurt. We're and, not on the Dallas Center property. That's true, but okay. we do skate every day. We'll go on the and sidewalk. And do it on the highway. On, on the, the highway? No. Okay. No. But I, I think if I did it on the highway, I think I'd be have more reason to sue than, the, than I would the Delta Center. Dude, that happens all the time. Goodbye. Oh. Can we see you for telling us to go skate on the highway? Yeah, Probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry to bother you. Thank you. Yeah, and that's an interesting point. You know, I would never see the city for anything. Like, I don't think people people aren't responsible for themselves ever. I think people's mothers sue the city. I don't think anyone sues. The I city. think as long as we get rid of all the mothers in the world, yeah. skateboarding will be okay. <laughs> hey, I, I no, but you know what? That was the point uh, at the first city hall meeting was. You know, they're talking about all these hypothetical lawsuits from people skating, people yeah, like nobody, shooting their boards into people's ankles. No one's ever seen And they were like, well, how many have there been, you like, know, up until now? And they were yeah, like, none. well, none yet. But I mean, that was only the first yeah, 17 yeah. years people have been skating, <laughs> you know? That could happen at any time. Yeah. So, and, and how many try people are trying to sue the city right now? Oh, a lot? Oh, okay. Why don't you ban everything else? Yeah, like exactly, that? right? <laughs>
Like everyone that falls Bottom down because they because of a crack in the sidewalk, yeah. it's just a stick. But I mean, ah. Bang, crack. Ridiculous. Crack kills. The idea that skateboarders will knock down a little old lady. Well, I dare anybody to find any little old lady in the United States of America that was ever knocked down by a skateboarder. You, have you seen anybody get hit by a skateboarder before? Oh, I've seen people come close. Well, like I said before, the kid, well, they usually harm themselves before they harm anybody else, but... Uh... I've seen them fall off and hurt themselves. Yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> it comes with the territory, I guess. Yeah. Oh, 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 holy shit! <laughs> Who makes life that low? It comes down similar, similar to gang members, really. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck, it's a duck. Uh, unfortunately, and, and it's not, it's not that I think it, we as law enforcement uh, try to profile as for for a catchphrase, mm -hmm. right? You know, but a lot of the, a lot of the skaters look and act the part of of a druggie or a drug user, mm -hmm. and as law enforcement. Uh, we we act on that. Key on it. You know that's that's part of our job is to identify those those individuals that may be problems. And if they look if they look and act like it, then you know we're going to see if there's something else there. It's silly to think that the police are going to stop profiling. You know whether it's racial or something else. Like yeah. a guy with dreadlocks and a pot leaf on his shirt is most likely to get the suspicious eye from the cop than like a guy with a suit and tie and a briefcase that's full of cocaine, you know what I mean? Like, you never know, but... Yeah. There's this one time my friend Charlie was getting a ticket from a cop and uh, and he's like, why are you why are you doing this? Like, uh, riding bikes downtown is illegal too and uh, a, like, a family rode by on their bikes. He's like, why aren't, you, why aren't you catching them? Like, why aren't you catching them for riding their bikes? Like, I'm just on a skateboard by myself. Like, same thing, you know? And the and the cop said, "Well, look at you," and he said, "What do you mean, look at me? Look at you! Like what? Like why are you? Like why are you picking on me?" And like obviously it's because the way he looked. Like your kids are, are running wild in the streets. You better address it, and don't and don't think addressing it means sending the police out to stop them or coming out and yelling at them. Yeah. You better get back to like why are they doing this? What does it mean to them? How can I how can I become a part of it? And help them and participate in this in a positive way. Yeah. Whether I agree with the fact that they're grinding up the bench in front of my store or not, you know, they are still kids that live in my community. They're obviously this is obviously their passion. This is obviously something they're doing with their time. They're not going to stop. Yeah. Why do you think skateboarders go to places where they're technically not supposed to? Um. Maybe because they um. There's too many people at the skate parks or. There's not a skate park close enough. I mean, a lot of people think it's a really great thing, and I do too. I really like the parks, and it's fun. But no park is better than a bad skate park because then you can still ride the streets. As soon as you have a park, the city has the right to crack down on the streets. And people don't understand that a whole aspect of skateboarding is the creativity of finding places and figuring out what to do with them. Well, you know, it's one thing is they know they're not supposed to be there. You know, nine times out of ten, you pull up and they see you and they start heading the other way. They're skating you know? right next to the <laughs> sign that says no skateboarding yeah. allowed. So they know they're they're not supposed to be doing that. And they think these people must really, these people must really have no respect for authority or no respect for the law. When in reality, the part they don't have respect for is the part that says that skateboarding is illegal. And I guess the law is the law. You're still breaking it, but we would be more helpful. If people looked at what you're doing as your own personal expression and your own personal athletic creativity and that maybe you know you, you just need somewhere else to do it. Do you make a lot of people mad? I make tons of people mad. Why? Why do they why do you think they get mad? Skateboarders are graffiti artists. They really are and except for the, the finished product isn't somewhat appealing at all to even a skateboarder. It's a question of uh, value systems. And I think that if people would really open their hearts to skateboarders that there would be a neutral ground of uh, concession. You know, it's a pretty small price to pay just replacing some concrete or granite every once in a while or having it cleaned if you want. Um, 
But I think skateboarders add life to a community if they're there, you know, as long as they're behaving responsibly. There's been more than 200 articles written about Love Park in the past two years in the local papers. There's so many. And so many of them are people writing in saying, I feel safe in the park when skateboarders are there. They're taking the skate stoppers off of ledges in certain areas of Vancouver as part of a program to make certain places more safe for women to walk through. The American mentality doesn't allow for that sort of thing as easily. And it's funny that it's happening, you know, miles from our border. The only problems that I see within skateboarding is kids feeling like they're, they have a stereotype placed upon them as they begin skateboarding. We were all good kids, you know? And then we picked up these skateboards and they started telling us we were bad kids. Everywhere they go, they're not supposed to be skateboarding, so in order to skateboard, you suddenly become a lawbreaker. Kids are going to be kids. Kids have always been kids. There's always a certain amount of rebelliousness. You know, it's just part of growing up. Whether those kids skate or not, I think there's always going to be those kids who don't want to um, follow the rules. Most of the skateboarders today go to school, go to college. Uh, maybe back in the 60s and 70s, if they skateboarded, that meant they chopped out of school or they were going to do drugs. How do you feel skateboarders should be treated? With respect. If they give us respect, we'll give them respect back. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Treat others how you want to be treated. Exactly. I respect what you do and what you're trying to do, but by the same token, I appreciate the same level of respect for my property, which is the personal property that you're on. Trying to uh, show respect for you know, law enforcement as well as the people in the community. No matter what you do, you can, you can be nice, you can be friendly and thankful. And even if a cop comes and says, hey, you shouldn't be skating here, you can say, I'm sorry, officer, and, uh, and be nice to him. Just part of growing up is realizing that the negative things that come onto you are always going to be turned into a positive for your life, if you want to be happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you can be mad about it and be like, yeah, this sucks, you know, my life. Like, the cops are always on my tail, or people are always judging me. Yada, 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 I'll show them. But, or you can turn it around and make it positive. Like, you know, they have no idea. They'll never know how it feels to skate a pool. I think parents just need to uh, know who their kids are. You know, they just need to know their own kids. Be able to put trust and faith in their kids. You know, trust and faith that their kids can make the right decisions. And that they've given them the right information. That they've, they are there to, to uh, talk about anything. I think that that people should just have a little bit more respect for everybody in general. Window and yell, skate or die, dude! And uh, and now they ride by and yell, 360 kickflip! You know, so now they shout tricks at you when they used to just shout like other stuff. Although I guess skate or die was a video game before, so really it all comes from video games when people yell at you out the window. I'll skate down the street and hear someone ask me to do a 900, you know? Like, you just saw that on TV. Watch a lot less TV and read a lot more books. The basic whole problem is that, like, why 14 year old kids are getting tackled at City Hall is because they're so much easier to catch than a drug dealer. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, a 14 year old kid isn't going to shoot back. How, um, how are skateboarders in the past different from skaters now? Uh, skateboarders from the past are old now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone fought for this. Yeah. Yeah. I never fucked anybody in the face about boxing and what's on. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure in the face. I'm not sure in the face. Okay. Campus, the bottom of campus. Uh, they... Fire! 
fire alarm, everybody back to the building. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Yes. Oh. I don't know that the kids that do skateboarding are any worse than kids that do snowboarding. I'm a skier. And frankly, snowboarders are offensive to me, but uh, that's because I'm a skier. Just don't show that to snowboarders because I don't want them hitting me up on the hill. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have a long board myself, and my kids pull me on the BMX bike on it all the time. It's quite fun. Cool. Okay. What got you into film? Uh, just in high school, I took a couple video classes. And uh, all I ever made in my video classes is either skateboard films or bands about or documentaries about local bands. That's what I'm still doing. I uh, when I was growing up, I I did some skateboarding. My yeah. mom was always worried that I was going to get hurt, so she she paid me some money to stop skateboarding. <laughs> Are you yeah. If I gave me a hundred dollars, would you let me throw your skateboard away? <laughs> and I was a kid, and a hundred dollars was a lot to me, so I took it. My name is Mike Valley. You might be surprised by that. Valley, not Valley. Look to Mickey for if you want answers, he'll give you answers. I'll just talk.